The world will be a better place. The houseplant community will be a better place without fungus gnats. All right, you guys, we have to talk about this because it's driving me crazy at the greenhouse. And I'm sure a lot of you in the summer, warmer regions are starting to go crazy with this too. So let's talk about the best ways to get rid of fungus gnats in your greenhouse. And we're gonna talk about all the different varieties we're doing here to do it safely, but effectively to get rid of the fungus gnats. <laughs> It's driving me crazy in the greenhouse to walk around and breathe and feel like a gnat is gonna fly in my mouth. It's super disgusting, and I'm sure you feel the same way. It is my least favorite pest of all pests, and that exceeds spider mites because they're just so annoying. They're flying all around. They're sometimes in the bathroom. They're anywhere that it's damp. So let's get into where these things are living. Remember that they're living in the top inch and a half of your soil typically, because that's where you water and they need that moisture to survive. They might also be in little puddles or in your sinks. So pour boiling water down your sinks. That's a hack that we use at home all the time and it actually helps. Pour them down your bathroom drains also. Also keep in mind, they're coming in your bag soil typically. I made a short about this. These things are living in the bag soil that's being stored outside in some big soil yard and it's being shipped to you in this plastic bag and then you open up the bag, especially like a bag or, you know, I don't wanna, name any big box store names, but a crappy cheap bag of outdoor soil and you open it, fungus gnats will fly right out. So make sure you're starting with sterile good ingredients or just like a good house plant mix or just make your own, make your own aeroid mix, three, two, one aeroid mix, we've talked about it. Start with sterile ingredients for your soil, but then use sticky traps to trap the adults. This is typical sticky trap paper. Maybe they're attracted to the yellow, I'm not sure, but it works. These things are gross and they stick to your clothes and I walk by them and they stick to me and I absolutely hate that and they look gross when they're in the background, but they work for catching the adults. Because what we use here is just things that are safe to be around my pregnant wife or just our coworkers. Krista, we don't wanna make anyone sick and that's just not the way we do things. So we also use BTI, which is the main ingredient in mosquito bits. Mosquito bits, everyone talks about them in the houseplant world. It's a chunk of something that doesn't work with a powdering of something that works. That's the BTI. Bacillus thuringiensis, Israeliensis, something like that. But we use it at 37.4%. We buy it in a huge vat and we break it down into smaller bits that we use around here. This is it right here in a bottle. It's a powder and you sprinkle it into your soil. I sprinkle it in any like puddles I see. I sprinkle it everywhere. I put it in a spray bottle with a little bit of water, shake it up because it's a bacteria, and then I spray it on everything because these gnats are so annoying. And when they're out bad, I'm spraying twice a week with this just to stay on top of the larvae because the larvae are killed by this and the adults are killed by this naturally. And the life cycle is about seven days. So you need to stay on top of that by doing larvae and the adults. Also, if you want to really avoid this, water your plants from the bottom up if you can. Put them in a Tupperware and just water from the bottom up and or put some sand on the top. We sell it as a gnat barrier. Put about an inch of sand on the top of your plant. It's really annoying for watering or checking when you need to water, but that makes it so those gnats can fly into the soil lay their little eggs and all their larvae and all their gross little things in there. And so it stops them from going in and out of the soil. I've also seen them be able to go up through the drainage holes, which is absolutely awful. And these fungus gnats that are all over this sticky, gross film that I can't believe I'm even holding, I'm about to go wash my hands. These fungus gnats, the feet of the fungus gnats, typically transmit pythium, which is root rot. That is the main causing thing that's killing off all my damn Thai constellations. So these gnats fly around, they go eat the algae in my trays, and then they have a parasite that's on their feet, and then they land on different plants and they put the root rot in all the different pots. And it drives me crazy, and let alone they're flying in my mouth. But these fungus gnats love moisture as we talked about. So if you wanna really avoid them, check out some LECA. Check out putting a rock on top of your soil, kinda like that sand idea also. But the problem with the LECA, if you have soil underneath, is that they'll kind of work their way through the holes in the LECA. Maybe try perlite, try different medias to make sure they can't get through. And this always stays dry, especially because I'm bottom watering these pots. But also there's not enough moisture on there or enough rot in the root zone to feed the fungus gnats. From what I understand, fungus gnats survive on fungi. 
So they're going in there looking for the little bits of algae and even though algae is not a fungi, just different little bits to eat. So quit over watering your soil plants, get good soil in those pots, consider using the LECA or something that's dry out on the top side of it and just don't overwater those pots. And if you're gonna do it, just do it from the bottom up. I know it's driving us all crazy. You can use mosquito bits, definitely use something to kill the fungus gnat at the larval stage and the egg stage because that cuts the life cycle. I hate to be grim about it, but this is just dealing with pests in the United States and throughout the world. You sometimes have to unalive a pest, especially a fungus gnat. I don't care for damn fungus gnats at all. The world would be a better place. The houseplant community would be a better place without fungus gnats. And if you bring in a new plant from a friend or a Facebook vendor or someone that you don't really trust that they might have fungus gnats, make sure to quarantine that pot in a little tent or a little bag or something and just seal it off and make sure that that soil that that plant came in isn't a breeding ground for all the larvae. And if you want to totally creep yourself out, go ahead and Google fungus gnat larvae video and it's so disgusting. They're like little worms. I can't stand them. But considering we have a couple thousand plants in this shop, there's not a lot of fungus gnats. There's a couple in the bathroom for some reason. As I said, they like moisture. So they can be under the benches. They can get in little puddles where a bucket wasn't where it was supposed to. So they start breeding in the smallest amounts of water, just like mosquitoes do. They say if you're trying to get rid of mosquitoes, get rid of all the standing water on your property. Fungus gnats are the same, and that BTI I told you about works for all of them. And it's bacteria, and it's organic, so it's going to get in there and establish within your soil. And that's why I'm spraying it all over. All the surfaces are covered in Bacillus thuringiensis, and that's how I like it, and I mix in with my neem. I've talked about that before. I'm spraying for spider mites, I'm spraying for fungus gnats. I don't even see them, I'm still spraying for them, just to be sure. And when I make a new batch of aeroid mix, I'm just misting the whole batch with the BTI just to inoculate the whole batch with that bacteria so they don't come back or ever decide to come there ever, ever again. And you can just take it and dust it directly on the soil. This stuff works the best, but you have to use it in conjunction with the sticky traps and or the sand to take care of the adults because this will only go after the larvae. But these are the real ways that we're doing it in a greenhouse space and actually having pretty good success. This has been up for like a week, week and a half. So that's pretty good. I mean, it's still gross, but fungus gnats are always gonna exist in a houseplant area. But also this BTI, this is what the state of Utah uses across their whole state to treat for mosquitoes. It treats mosquitoes and it treats fungus gnats. I don't care for either one of those animals at all. So it's organic and it's safe and clearly this is too. So I hope you guys learned how to take care of your fungus gnats. They are the worst pest, even worse than the spider mite to me. And they are at their height when it gets the warmest, the hottest, and even in the humid areas, I'm sure down in Florida, in the south, it is going crazy with fungus gnats. But if you enjoyed this week's video, please click the like button down below and click subscribe so you can come back next week for another video or two about houseplants. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.